Welcome to Boiling Point. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what makes boiling different from evaporation. And we're also going to talk about when boiling actually occurs. Before we get started, remember that the change in state between liquid and gas, when a substance changes from a liquid to a gas or from a liquid to a vapor, that process, that phase change, is called vaporization. In the last lesson, we looked at how this vaporization occurs at all temperatures, where particles from the surface escape from the liquid, and we call that evaporation. But we also know from experience that if you add enough heat to a liquid, it will begin to boil. So what's the difference between boiling and evaporation? Well, let's think about it from an observational standpoint. If I asked you to look at a sample and determine if it was evaporating or boiling, you would probably look for one big clue. And that clue would be the presence of bubbles, like in this clip right here of the boiling water. The bubbles coming up through this water tell you that the water is boiling. And these bubbles are being formed below the surface of the water. So boiling is actually the formation of vapor under the surface of the liquid. And when that vapor is formed under the surface, it creates those bubbles that then travel upward and break through the surface to release that vapor into the air. And that's why you get this bubbling motion in a boiling liquid. So that's really the major difference between evaporation and boiling. In evaporation, molecules on the surface escape from the liquid. In boiling, on the other hand, molecules on the inside of the liquid gain enough energy to vaporize and then form bubbles which travel up to the surface. Now from your own experience, you know that boiling occurs when you add enough heat to something. So that means boiling has to have some relationship with temperature. And in fact, if you were to put a thermometer into a sample of boiling water, you would see that the thermometer would read 100 degrees Celsius for boiling water. And even if you increase the amount of heat added to the water, the temperature would not rise above 100 degrees Celsius because the liquid can only get to 100 degrees Celsius. Anything that gets hotter becomes steam and leaves the liquid. So the thermometer could only ever get to 100 degrees Celsius in the boiling water. And we call that the boiling point. And in fact, 100 degrees Celsius for water is actually called the normal boiling point because it occurs at standard pressure. So at one atmosphere pressure, that's the normal pressure at sea level. So us sitting here in New York City, we have one atmosphere pressure. We're about at sea level. So our elevation determines our pressure that we experience. So at sea level here in New York City, we're experiencing one atmosphere pressure. And our water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. However, if I were to go to the top of Mount Everest, and I wanted to boil a cup of water, I could get that cup of water boiling, but the thermometer in this case would read 69 degrees Celsius. Now that's strange. How could the water be boiling at a lower temperature? Well, it has to do with the elevation. On Mount Everest, or I should say at the top of Mount Everest, we're far above sea level to the point where the air is thinner and there's less atmospheric pressure. So if at normal elevation at sea level, so here's New York City down at sea level, we have one atmosphere pressure, all the way at the top of Mount Everest, there's only 0.26 atmospheres of pressure. So when we have less atmospheric pressure, we actually see a lower boiling point. So from this example, we can see that the boiling point clearly changes with elevation. And it changes with elevation because any liquid boils when its vapor pressure matches the atmospheric pressure. That's the actual definition of boiling, when vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Now, down here in New York City, we need the vapor pressure to equal one atmosphere. But on the top of Mount Everest, we only need the vapor pressure to equal 0.26 atmospheres. So what does it have to do with vapor pressure, though? Because these are atmospheric pressures. Well, we know that vapor pressure changes with temperature. In the last video, we looked at some vapor pressure curves. And we know that when temperature goes up, vapor pressure goes up as well. So we need a higher vapor pressure down here at New York City to make it boil. So we need a higher temperature. 
100 degrees. But at the top of Mount Everest, we need less vapor pressure, so we also need less temperature. So we end up with a boiling point of 69 degrees. So the relationship between the boiling point temperature and the elevation has to do with vapor pressure and how vapor pressure changes with temperature. That wraps up our lesson on boiling point. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.